in plant reproduction, we're going to start with the life cycle of a plant. First thing that's going to happen is that pollen is going to be produced by the plant, and pollen is going to be produced in the stamen. If you look at your picture of a plant down here, your stamen is the male part of the, of the flower. And um, that pollen is then going to move away from the plant. Either it's going to be blown by the wind, or a pollinator like a bird or a bee is going to carry it to another plant. And then the pollen is going to land on the pistil of another plant and fertilize the egg that's inside of the ovary. Once that egg is fertilized, then the flower petals will fall off, and the ovary will turn into a fruit. Um, and that fruit is what protects and encloses the seed. And then fruits will be dispersed, either by being eaten and then the seeds deposited um, as waste by the animal that ate them, or um, the wind might blow the seeds away. But either any, however they're dispersed, they're going to be um, deposited somewhere so that they can then let the seed um, plant and germinate and grow into a new plant. Now fruits, um, even though when we think of fruit we think of apples and oranges and things like that, fruits are not always edible. Um, a fruit is anything that contains a seed um, in a flowering plant. And that can be something like um, little helicopter seeds that have sort of wings on them so the wind can carry them, acorns and dandelions, those are all types of fruits. Okay, so here we have a picture of this process. Um, if we start where the pollen is produced, um, that pollen is then going to get blown by the wind or moved by a bee onto the pistil of another flower, where it's going to fertilize the ovule, um, which is the female part of the plant. And then that ovule will turn into a fruit, where the seed will then be dispersed and planted in the ground and then become a new plant after it germinates. Now, there are some ways that plants can reproduce that are asexual. Not all plants reproduce asexually, but some plants can clone themselves, um, and that process is called vegetative propagation. Things like strawberry plants can send out runners, um, and those runners are called rhizomes, and they grow underground and then will produce a new plant. And then some plants can grow from clippings. If you take a potato and plant it, it'll become a new plant, even though the potato isn't actually a seed. It's actually the root of a plant. Here we have a picture of a flower. Um, just to give you an idea of some of those parts of the flowers. Um, first, let's look at the petal. You know what a petal is, probably. But then if you look down here at the bottom, there's a sepal. A sepal um, is the name given to the leaves that grow around the flower, and they're sort of the form of a petal, but they're not actually colored usually. Um, and then we have the stamen and the pistil, which are the male and female parts of the plant. The stamen is made of the anther, where the pollen is found, and the filament, which is sort of the stalk that holds the anther. And the pistil is made of the stigma, which is sticky so that it can catch the pollen, and the style, which is the tube that the pollen will travel down to get to the ovary and the ovule, which are um, going to produce a seed. So in the flower, that's the reproductive organ for the plant. Usually they have both male and female parts. That male part of the flower is called the stamen, and the female part of the flower is called the pistil. Now, once a plant is germinated, or once it, uh, a seed gets planted, germination has to happen. And germination usually happens because of a change in temperature or moisture. It lets the plant know it's the right time of year for it to grow, and then the seed will sprout. Now, as that seed sprouts, we can look at the picture here, it's going to um, have an initial leaf that forms inside of the, the seed. And if only one leaf forms, then it, we say that that's one cotyledon. Cotyledon is the name of that initial leaf that forms inside the plant. And if there are two leaves that are formed, we say it has two cotyledons. And so this is one of the ways we classify plants based on how many little leaves are formed inside the seed. Monocots have one seed leaf, and dicots have two seed leaves. Um, and then for growth, plants have special cells. Um, and at the tips of their roots and their shoots, they have what we call meristem cells. These are the meristems, and this is where they will grow taller um, or longer roots. And then they also have vascular cambium, and cambium is the area inside of a plant that will produce more phloem and xylem. 
and it's going to be found mostly in the roots and the uh, stem, but then also in the veins of the leaf. So the phloem and xylem are the transport system, so this is how you produce more cells in the transport system is through the vascular cambium, which are just sort of cells that are waiting to grow into new xylem and phloem. You can kind of tell the age of some plants um, by looking at the rings. Um, this is really evident in tree trunks. You can look at the rings in a tree trunk and it'll tell you about how old the tree is and what kind of weather it's experienced in its past. Here's a picture that shows you a tree that's been through four growing seasons. And you can see the four light colored um, stripes in the tree show the winter periods that it's experienced. And so whenever it's cold, the color is going to be lighter. All right, and then lastly, there are three main types of life cycles for a plant. Perennial plants are plants like trees. Usually they're going to be the woody plants with bark. Um, they live for several years and will reproduce over and over again. Um, they have a long life cycle. Annuals, um, that's the name of a plant that will live for one year, and it completes its whole life cycle in one year, so it grows, flowers, reproduces, and then it will die after one year. Um, a lot of flowers that you plant in flower gardens are annuals, and they have to re be replanted each year. And then lastly, we have biennials, which are kind of like annuals, but they take two years to grow instead, and so they're similar because they'll die after two years, um, and they just take a little bit longer to mature. So those are the different life cycles of a plant.